I would delete me um, being sort of cast out of my chosen profession. <laughs> <laughs> I would, and I, and so I would add to the record me having a job. Well, 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 well. Chalvarino. <laughs> Kaylarino. What is going on with you, brother? Holy fucking shit. How does it feel to be back behind two mics together? Two mics in the same room. Puss in the boob. <laughs> It's Puss in the Boob. <laughs> Puss in the Boob. Puss in the Boob, back on the track. Keeping Records reunion time. <laughs> you guys are listening. <laughs> you guys are listening to Keeping Records. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. <laughs> Legally, can we say Keeping... It? Well, this is a... Jake, Amir, please. <laughs> Jake, Amir, step out of the company Miata and chat with us for a second. Shelby, what have you been up to? <laughs> I don't know. We haven't talked since the last episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We actually can't joke about that. Our, here's the thing about Keeping Records fans. They are rabid and unstable. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I love you guys more than life itself. You've got to relax. Um, Caleb and I talk often about how you guys think that we hate each other. It's funny <laughs> to an extent. It's like funny to like, like literally Keeping Records fans every day on my social media are like, and why aren't you behind a microphone with Shelby? <laughs> There's like 75 Keeping Records fans who would die for the idea that we are in, in drama with one another. And we are. And we are. Yeah, do you want to talk about our falling out? Is that how we should start off? I guess Caleb um, and I were dating the same woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, God, what was her name? Oh, Sofia Vergara. Sofia Vergara. We were both dating Sofia Vergara. And it was fun. It was fun. But then what happened was I was ready to propose. Yeah, and I was not. <laughs> And I, and yet he said I couldn't propose if we were going to be, it, it was like a whole, th it was like. Yeah. We need to be on the same page or completely different, different pages. pages. And so then it was different. like, well, we were different pages. And so then we just didn't talk for a couple of years. We didn't but. talk for a couple of years. What has happened with you, <laughs> girl? Hmm. What is going on with your last couple of years, girlina? <laughs> Count those W's. Count those, stack those checks. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's W Nation over here. I keep, it, the joke to me was that our dads both died, but that in fact happened during the podcast. I was about to say, well, we what's forget. happened? My dad passed, but yeah. we talked about that with you guys. In fact, we did, we did that podcast episode. <laughs> We did that episode. We did that Should episode. we get back into it? Grief is... <laughs> so grief can be so powerful. Grief takes many different forms. And by the way, it's not linear. But you're you're going to probably do a new podcast soon, right? Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I'm really excited about it. Well, we'll see. <laughs> well... <laughs> you guys, listen up when it happens. You guys, for real. Pop, peep that announcement. No, for real, guys. When it happens. Peep that announcement when it happens. When it happens. And I want your ears and eyes on it. What's been on? Uh, what's been on your record as of late? What's been on my record as of late? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What do you love and what are you hating? I've been making a lot of playlists lately. Like every two weeks, I'm like new playlists. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I've and been doing... Oh, go ahead. No, you. Well, I was just going to say, I've been doing an... <laughs> last year, I made a best of 2023 playlist mm -hmm. at the end of the year. This year, I'm doing my best of 2024 playlist as we go. Okay. So when I find a, a, new, a new release that I love, I'm adding it in there. So at the end of the year, I'll have a compilation. I think what I might end up doing at the end of the year is taking all of my mini playlists yes. and just adding them all to one mass. And I think that's genius. We're because doing the right same thing now, effectively. Yeah, except for right now, if I make it all into one big playlist, when I play it, I'm like, ugh, I've listened to this song 600 times this past three months. Yeah. And so instead I go, this one's wearing on me. Yeah. Or if I add it late into that playlist, yeah. I also add it into the next one. What are you loving? What's big on your mind right now? I've got some loves and some hates, but I want to know yours. You say yours first. My first, I, help me to give you some time. Yeah. Um, don't forget me. Like. Don't forget me by Maggie, Maggie Rogers. Okay. Banger hit for me. I'm loving it. Okay. She put a little bit of Faith Hill in it. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, both the new Waxahachie singles, Bored and Right Back to It with MJ Linderman. Loving. Hating. Here's something I want to say. And I love this girl, Ina, to death. And I know she's a listener. Casey Musgraves. <laughs> The latest were. single, Deeper Well. Let's dig a little deeper into that well. But the well could be deeper. You know, the like well I'm just, deeper. the well could be deeper. Let's it, get, let's reach some more down there. Let's keep digging. <laughs> it just has not been there for me since Golden Hour. Yeah, I didn't love Lala. La. And you know what I'm scared of? <laughs> I'm scared. I didn't love Lala. La, I'm scared <laughs> because Golden Hour was so perfect. Yeah. That I'm scared, really scared for Chapel Roan right now. Because I think Chapel Roan just put out a, a Golden Hour 
uh, level of perfection album, and I'm worried about the next one. My mom famously has lesbian music taste. One is, of the most lesbian music <laughs> ears I've ever seen. Is really loving Chapel right now. Yeah. So Chapel Girl, <laughs> your time is now. You are up with Dykes. You're Chapel. up, with, and you're up with my mom. Yeah, but the, she's kind of the Puxatani Phil of Dykes. <laughs> yeah, my mom's like, here's what's actually in for gays. Well, lesbians it's love it or hate crazy. it. Crazy. I did, I sent you a te- the text that my mom sent me about. I said you have lesbian music taste, and she was like, what am I supposed to listen to? <laughs> <laughs> she's in way. She's right. You're her out. She was like, I'm sorry. What am I supposed to listen to? Kanye West. Well, I was like, I guess I don't know. I love her. Your she, mom is an icon to me. <laughs> She likes she likes Muna, she likes Chapel, she likes Tovlo, <laughs> she likes. Is it Tovlo or is it Tuvelu? I think it's technically Tuvelu, but do we have to do? I that? I think that's kind of like when you say baguette, <laughs> like croissant. It's like no, it's Tovlo. Let's oh be my fucking god! Real. Do you know what my least favorite? And it's Bon Iver, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bon Iver. Sorry, Bon Iver. It's like. Oh. Bon I'm Iver. Not, I'm not a professor. Do you know what my least when favorite? When I start wearing tweed, I'll say Bon Iver. My least favorite suburban white person trait is when they go, oh, I would just go into Target. <laughs> Target. Just, what do you, and they're not doing it like they think that's how it's pronounced. They think it's like cute. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> I hate well, it. I'm going to, I'm doing like a little Target run. It's like. Just a little run to Target. You're going to Target. You're going to Target. And by the way, it's way cool to go to Target. It's super cool. Go in there. We're sponsored by Target. We love that place. <laughs> Free clap for the girlies. Target, we love what you're doing. Free clap for the girlies really upset some people on the Keeping Records <laughs> well, threads. Well, we started really bleeping things We were out. bleeping everything we were saying, and the girls were not liking that. We're going to do that today. <laughs> no free clout for the girlies. No free clout. And but what Target, I'm loving right now I'm is Dr. Pepper. Oh. Bleep. Bleep. <laughs> <laughs> I've been loving the soft drink Dr. Pepper. Bleep. I saw it. I guess... I guess we call it a meme these days. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, n- I guess these days. <laughs> I guess we're calling this a meme these days, but yeah, I, guess I saw uh, something on the web. <laughs> I was on the interwebs. <laughs> I was surfing the web and I saw something <laughs> that was like, someone said, I went to the Dr. Pepper factory and the weirdest part to me was that they didn't explain this and it's a picture of just like a really deep hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deeper well that they draw it from. I can't stop thinking about it because I'm like, I don't know if that was like, uh, like not there, and they're like, it's a different picture, and they were doing a play on that. But the joke of the meme was someone going, "That's where they keep him." Yeah, Doctor Beck. <laughs> so it's like the original thing wasn't a joke itself. It was like. What is this? That's where they contain Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I, I wish I had, I don't know how I would even find it on my phone, but I, the hole is so much deeper than you're thinking. <laughs> it goes on forever. <laughs> it's an endless. It's an endless hole. It's an endless hole. Hey, I've had a few of those. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Shelby, don't leave. <laughs> yes. Ew. It goes so deep. Ew, we'll have to put that up over here. Ew. Yeah, it's on set. I don't like it. It feels mystical as well. And why would they have a deep, deep, deep hole at Dr. Pepper Fact? Fact. <laughs> at Doc Pep Fact. At DP Fact. <laughs> at DPF. You know, I'd love to go down to DPF and check I out the big hole. I would love to go to the DPF. Oh, sorry, but not dude. Now I can't hang out tonight. Me and the boys are going to DPF to check out the hole. God, the hole at DPF. It hits diff. It hits diff when you're at the hole at DPF. <laughs> There's nothing like cracking open a cold DP at the DPF hole. <laughs> right by the hole. Just gathering around the hole and being like, ah. Feet dangling of, into an style. endless hole. I think that's Ooh. my biggest fear, actually, it turns out. An endless hole? Feet dangling in. Feet dangling into it? Yeah. Okay. That's your deepest fear? I think. Well, I think you're probably. Uh, dying alone. Oh. Uh, have I told you recently that my new thing that I keep thinking about is like, if I died, obviously people would be sad. But me, me chief among them, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of our friends would be would be be better off having to deal with the grief. <laughs> <laughs> you, hold on. <laughs> like I think our friends could learn a thing or two from losing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, like there are some, it would offer some perspective to <laughs> friends. I think there's some friends that would, it, the perspective would do wonders. You, that is the most, <laughs> that is the most like mom at the end of her rope thing to say. When I'm gone, then you'll all realize. It's not about like losing me. So like, it's not like my <laughs> loss. It's like 
the loss of a loved one. <laughs> A, cur- a person clearly dealing with loss. I think everyone in my friend group needs to go through something harrowing soon. <laughs> I can't just keep being me and Caleb. I'm sick of knowing this feeling alone. <laughs> I'm like, y'all gotta get to know it. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna clock out soon and y'all gonna learn. One of the top ten most concerning things you've ever said to me. <laughs> I'm tired of knowing grief alone. I think my friends would benefit from me being gone. Anyway, there's a hole in the Dr. Pepper factory. <laughs> I, I don't have suicide in me. I couldn't do it, but I, I you really don't. I don't I've tried. I've tried to pull it out of you. Yeah, I know, but I am like, mm-hmm. wow. My, my life would Shelby. My life would be measurably worse if you were gone. Whoa. He so, says this after he moved away from LA. So you stick around. <laughs> He's like, my life would be so much different if I couldn't see you every day. I am going to Kansas City for a month. <laughs> <laughs> now you're always invited to Kansas City. Don't play games on here. That's true, but when a girl's broke, a girl's broke. What's up, y'all? A few quick things from me. I'm going on tour. I'll be in New York, D.C., Philly, Chicago, Nashville, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Dallas, Houston, and Fort Worth in the coming weeks. So please go get tickets and come see me live. Uh, If you're enjoying the podcast, there is so much more of it exclusively on Patreon, including monthly bonus episodes from me and additional segments with every guest. So go check that out if you want more. So true. And finally, if you're enjoying the show, please tell your friends, subscribe everywhere, leave a five-star review and all that stuff. Okay. Love you. Ciao. Well, I am curious about how you're feeling about life. No, I, I want to live forever. I just think some people, I just think some people, you know. What do you think is the ideal age to go, really? Actual ideal? Actual ideal. I mean, it, there's two options to take, right? It's yeah. like 100. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, ugh, my I body would, would feel horrible. I would never go that way, yeah. My body will feel bad by 80. Yeah. I think, look, it depends how much success I get. If okay. I'm successful, 80. Okay. <laughs> if I'm unsuccessful, 45. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not having success by 45, take, honey, me. take it out. Take what are we me. doing? <laughs> what, I'm just like sitting around? Please take me. I'm unemployed right now and I'm bored as fuck. You really are. I've been I've been getting some phone calls. Caleb, no, God, Caleb. <laughs> I laughed so hard at this. Caleb, the other day, I texted him, was like, what are you doing today? And he sent me an itinerary of 15 different things. <laughs> and he said, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. I, <laughs> I have a haircut at 4.30. <laughs> and he called me and he said, hey, are, are you okay? I just, <laughs> it was really sad to hear that you don't have anything going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it made me laugh. And I did see you that day. Yes. I saw you that day. I made time because I'm worried. You didn't make time for me. I, I made time. Ins- no. I cut out time to, for you. He went to the plans he already had in his schedule. I just happened to already be there. And I didn't cancel on those plans because I knew you'd be there. That's not what I happened. cut out time for you. <laughs> and I'll never let you slide by. I'll never let you slide by into your depression. I'm going to bring you out of it every time. I'm not depressed. You're really not. But it is a fun <laughs> bit. I'm not depressed. I'm vibing. You kind of are vibing. I'm vibing. I like the way you're dressing lately. I like your vibes lately. You're dating, which I like a lot. You're out. Shelby is a hey, <laughs> LA girlies. Do you want me to say guy guys too? Or what are you thinking? <laughs> What's up with that lately? I think probably like if the, no. We're cool. Too. <laughs> <laughs> LA girlies. <laughs> Shelby's on the prowl. So if you're a cool lesbian, if you're she's a cool on the lesbian, she's hunting. Shelby's hunting prey. <laughs> Shelby's at the bars and she's hunting. Shelby, Shelby's at the bar trying to pick up chicks aggressively. <laughs> Shelby's been taking it a little too far lately. Shelby's got a problem. <laughs> Shelby's in a bad space with it. Whoa. Where are you going? This had a short leash. I went like this. <laughs> we keep Shelby on a short leash. I went and it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay Slow-mo in your, that. Stay in your place. <laughs> Slow-mo that. Stay in your place. Shelby place. I do. There is. Sorry, John, because I am a toucher of this. Of this. Of this. Of nothing else. I'm I a toucher touch, of this. I don't touch people. I'm hunting. I'm hunting girls, but I'm not going to touch them. No. Ew. 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 I don't touch them. Hey, uh, we have some fan voicemails for you. You want to do a couple? Yeah. Are they addressing me by name? <laughs> no, not these ones. But they, no they're worries. they're for you in spirit. Cool. We got two for you. Something I want to know the truth about is insurrectionist Mima and kind of where she is today. 
um, you know, that lady, the old woman who was at the interaction, she yeah. uh, was, well, ultimately wearing a mask, which is a bit confusing considering where she was, um, and holding an American flag. And she looks like, I mean, she's going to turn to dust in about 30 seconds. But I need to know who she is, how she got there, who's Mima is that? Who brought her? Why did they bring her? Certainly she was a liability to everything that was kind of going on. Um, did she get out? Is she in jail? Is she still alive? Does she remember anything from that day? Was she conscious? The length of this is crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> these are all the things that I really need to know about. I need someone to locate her to and to kind of pass the mic to her so that she might tell her story. Um, or her, her POV, if you will, of January 6th and the events that transpired on that sure. um, historic day. Um, I know her to be modeling for the animators at Bob's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> She's working over there. I found, out, I found an article during all that that said the we tracked down Capitol Mima, who was not actually at the Capitol. A January 6th photo of an older Trump supporter was actually taken in Topeka, Kansas, not at the scene of the mob riot in Washington, D.C., that was written by her family and her lawyer. Yeah, it is on BuzzFeed <laughs> They were like, yeah, actually, news. she's in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's with her grandchildren <laughs> baking cookies. She hired a really good lawyer who was like, uh, that is, looks a lot like the Capitol. Yeah. But if you actually, if you talk to everyone that she knows and love, and that loves her, she was actually in Topeka, Kansas. She was at home in Topeka, Kansas. Oh, how many of you were in Topeka, Kansas? You were at January 6th. Well, it was a fun day with my friends. <laughs> with your Mima. Yes. That's Me your Mima. went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my grandma. We have like a really complicated past, but we really, we didn't used to get along almost at all. And then once Trump took the presidency, we finally connected on something. Okay. Yeah. Because we were like, this guy rocks. I forgot that about you. <laughs> this guy's got some good ideas. What do you, by the way. Better heart. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, um, moving off of insurrectionist <laughs> Mima? Because we have nothing for her. We have. We She's don't know the Topeka. truth about her. She's in Topeka. There's nothing on her. What What are you looking for in a lady? I'm trying to get you a girl from this. I'm back on that. I'm back on that. What do you need in a young woman? I, I don't know. I feel so stressed answering that. I can't. I can't Putting it on the record. Enough. I can't stress enough how stressed I feel. Well, just like hair color. <laughs> Any. Any. I think. I mean, like, let's not go green. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We learned something from that. I do, I do think when we're getting a little too wacky with the colors, I go, oh, God, come on. Yeah. I think that shouldn't be part of the gay culture anymore. Bright hair, bright hair colors. Yeah, just be normal hair. I think when you're gay, you don't have to look worse. <laughs> <laughs> I think gay people have decided if they're out, they should look a little worse. <laughs> and I don't think you have to do that. I think you can look good still. That's actually really powerful to hear because I've been thinking I need to look, I've been looking bad on purpose to seem gay. There it is. It's literally like, <laughs> you'll see something that's like, what? how do gay people dress? And it's like, holy shirt. <laughs> like, it's like, like Adam Sandler, like gym shorts, yeah, cowboy like, boots. It's like, Jesus Christ, just put on a pair of nice fitting pants for once. I know that I'm not cut out for LA <laughs> in, in its entirety because the way people dress in LA stresses me out. I'm like, Brooklyn too. Put the Janko jeans away. Put the cow, the cow, it's specifically the trend I'm seeing lately with cowgirl boots and gym shorts. Enough. Stop. Enough. Stop. And I get it. I see you. I, you want to be clocked as gay, especially like hot femmes are like, well, I guess I'll dress really disgusting because I'm hot and femme. Yeah. So I can dress horrible so that people know I'm interested in women. It's like, please, for the love of God, just wear like a couple of rings or something. Or I like don't a, know. A pen or something. <laughs> Put a ring on. I I promise we're going to figure it out. People are going to try with you regardless. You're gorgeous. Just do short nails. Do short nails and, and like keep like two unpainted. <laughs> That's like one of the biggest signs there is. Okay. I didn't know that. I mean, people aren't always doing that, but I'm like, if you are concerned about being clocked, that would do it for me. I'd be like, that's... Is it, is it these two? No, it's your thumb and your pinky. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine? Me fingering somebody like this. <laughs> All right, hey, hang loose. What's that? <laughs> what, you know, boys in high school... Uh, well, uh, What'd you two in say? The pink, boys in high school used to... Two, two in the pink, pink one, one in the stink. stink. Yeah. <laughs> that's this. This guy? Yeah. But not me. I'm fingering people like this. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me get my pincers in there. I don't like it. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I think with hair color, be normal about it. It being, doesn't have to be your natural either. Being Just regular be normal with it. about it. Like, think about like what your bully in high school would dye her hair, and it could be any of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get so nuts. Don't you get know? so nuts with it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what our other voice is. <laughs> what are we, now that we solved that. <laughs> hey, Caleb and guests. Um, Name me. <laughs> something that I've always wanted to know the truth about is why Henry Winkler and Tom Hanks hate each other. Um, by all accounts, know. they seem to be two of the most beloved men in Hollywood um, in terms of like onset behavior. And yet they've been in a feud for decades. Are you looking that up? I'm about to. And I would just love, I feel, I feel pretty confident that it's probably Tom's fault. Um, but I feel so the opposite. I would just love, I would love to know. I'd love to be taken back in like a, a pensive, like Harry Potter, uh, memory thing, uh, to whatever fight led to this feud. Oh, thank you. Bye. So it came from when they were filming something together. 1982, an episode of the TV sitcom Happy Days, where Hanks played the bit part of Dr. Dwayne Twitchell. Um, but the feud wouldn't spark until years later when they collaborated once more on the f comedy flick Turner and Hooch. Hanks played the protagonist, Detective Scott Turner, a stern character who whatever. And Winkler was supposed to direct the film <laughs> before he was fired by the studio mere weeks into filming. Though it was never officially confirmed, it was highly rumored that it was Hanks who got Winkler booted from the director's chair. <gasps> I'm reading the same article, so I put it down. <laughs> I could tell when the words were verbatim. Um, That's yeah, there's crazy. a guy who's friends with them both and was and said that their relationship was disappointing. I, I see this for us. Me and you. Yeah. All I hear is we're gonna be working on some big projects. <laughs> But no, Shelby, you're going to get me booted from directing a movie. I think you'll survive it. <laughs> you're going to get past that. I'm going to cry. And do something bigger and better. Because I really see like this for Toy us. Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get bigger and better, and you're going to play... Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Bitch. <laughs> I would love to play... Oh, my God. We should make a gay Toy Story. We should make gay Toy Story, me and you. Buzz is like, Buzz is like quit, bitch. <laughs> He's like to infinity and beyond, bitch. <laughs> there's a there's a low key a snake in my boot. <laughs> He's like I'm literally gonna slay in space, bitch. <laughs> He's like, what are your literally boots housed? <laughs> Not little Bo Peep serving cunt. That's a Woody line. That's a Woody line. Uh oh, little Bo Peep serving cunt. <laughs> <laughs> the the evil kid who tries to destroy the toys Sid. is like a, a yeah Sid's like a non-binary Sid was non-binary unfortunately you the think? I felt him so boycotted I don't know the, you were the, the, the buzz cut hair and the skull shirt was giving non-binary <laughs> you go back to that room play you know what he had that <laughs> or they had that sorry they sorry, they. <laughs> they had that spider with a human head yeah they were playing with identity they were sort of early they were fucking with gender in a very they were doing something unique and special they were like you don't actually have to be one thing from the start and i think we looked past that as queerness that's queer that spider person is queer and i think tom hanks and henry winkler are one day uh i think they were lovers did we <laughs> Hey, do you want to tell the people what this is? Hey, that's a vase I made. And if any of you ever want something made by me, please, for the love of God, DM me. I'm not employed. I bought this. He did buy that. I bought that from Shelby. And you did a really good job on it. It's beautiful. It used to be in my bedroom. And now it's in here. So it's, I've, actually, I've actually had sex really close to that thing. I've never had sex near it. Why not? I never had it in my house long enough. Okay. No I don't think I ever had it in my house. <laughs> no, we're straight from the stew to the to the stew to the shop. Stew to the shop to the Caleb's house. Yeah, and I and I didn't fuck at the stew. 
And I didn't fuck at the craft fair. <laughs> you never did one of those ghost style pottery fuckings? No, they're really weird about who comes into that studio. Yeah, and who comes in the studio, right? Come on. <laughs> didn't want to give it to him, but kind of had to, huh? <laughs> Anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we completely, we completely <laughs> fall off after that. Hey, Shelby, it was so much fun having you, girl. I love you to death. Oh, what's been on your mind lately? What's going on with you? What are you thinking about? What's up with you? <laughs> is this, is this, is this what I've prepped? <laughs> well, do you want to, you want to tell the people you're so true? Is that what you're asking? What's me, something that's so true to you? What's on my mind? I'm asking generally what's up with you, but I, in fact, <laughs> now would like to know you're so true. I, my so true. I have two on my mind. One is so convoluted that I think I just have to let it sit <laughs> and not address it. And we'll be hearing that maybe later, but for, what's <laughs> okay. the one you want to run with? Well, is that I think ethical meat is unethical. Okay. Speak on that. I think when you go to a restaurant and they're like, they name the cow. Yeah. They're like, this is the cow. Yeah. His, like her name was. This is Margot. Margot. And yeah. she had a beautiful life on this thing. I'm like, that's the one that should have lived. Yeah. The one that we should have killed is the one chained to a fence the in a factory. <laughs> <laughs> I think like if the cow is that happy, <laughs> let it live. Why are we, why is that the one we want? The dead? one we named and gave a beautiful life to? I'm we'll like, save so you're her. telling me, you're telling me, you're telling me that this cow had a farmer it trusted and loved. <laughs> like let it run free all the time and they just had a beautiful relationship until one day he came out and was like, sorry dude, with a knife and slit her throat. Oh my God. You made it. You made it a nice slitting that's how throat. That's how kosher meat is made. Oh my god, really? Yeah. Good thing I don't eat kosher meat. <laughs> it's supposed to be feel better. <laughs> I don't know. It's supposed to feel better. Oh my god. And so that, but then instead, what we're doing is they're still making the factory meat. Yeah. So then there's a cow begging for death. So and pleading. <laughs> it's sitting there going, please, <laughs> please, please. And they're like, nah, today we're gonna take Margot. <laughs> don't eat Margot. Eat. One four seven one three. <laughs> hey, eat the number cow. I think you're right. I don't, I'm, I'm really done. with you. I'm done. I'm done being at a and they're like our cows are raised. I'm like they shouldn't be. If we're gonna eat them, don't give them a taste of life. But you're not eating them. That's your thing. I'm not eating them at all. But if I was, I'd want the one that wants to die. <laughs> yeah, you're real for that. It's like if you if someone if someone came into a room and said you have to kill someone in here. I would say who's saddest. I would say who's been chained up the longest. <laughs> I would say which one of you is saddest and wants to die the most. And that, to me, would feel like the ethical choice. That's just. That's just. That's righteous and just. I'm like, I'm sorry. If I came in and I was like, I don't know, who's been happiest? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Why are you killing her? I think I would kill the happiest person. What? I think I would. I would go, I go, because you know when I'm most comfortable with death is when I'm having my best times. I go, oh, it would, now would be a great time to go. I'm up. If someone in the room was ideating, I'd say, I'll just do it. Ideating. <laughs> suicidal. <laughs> if someone was suicidal ideating, you would just take them out? If I, I had to. I'm given a gun. I'm given a gun. They said, if, I, if you don't kill one person in here, we're killing you all. I'm going, okay, fine. Who is the saddest in here? I think I was with you on the cows because they have no autonomy. But I think with humans, <laughs> I would go happiest because I'd go, I'm going to take you out while your, uh, your hand is hot. No. Sad people, I'd, I'm like, I'm going to give you a chance to recoup. What if it, they never do? And then and then it's like, okay, well, then so then they, they have to live a lot of... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, but I want them to have the chance at a, I think, I think I would kill the happier person. I'd say who in here is happiest? Not me. Not me. Not me and me. you are just different kind of killers. <laughs> Not me. I'm, it's a mercy kill for me. Yeah. Mine is opposite. I think I want to go out in a happy place and not a sad place. I think it is happy you're dying a hero. I'm giving someone an opportunity to die a hero to save the whole room. Yeah. So you you think you're changing their story? Yeah. You're not a depressed loser with no prospects. No. You're a hero to this room. Exactly. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. But I think, yeah, when people talk ethical meat, I go, that to me is the least ethical that there is. What was the so true that you didn't want to say? <laughs> I have been having a hard time recently with how many period pieces we have on TV and movies because often they're having people fuck. And to me... All I'm thinking is there is a smell in that room that you couldn't imagine. There's a smell in that room that we have eradicated. Yeah, we've gotten rid we've of that. We've gotten rid of the smell that's in that room because well, we have. like it not doesn't entirely. 
it has. Sex still smells crazy sometimes. Not the way that it smells there. Yeah. Because these are people who have ne who have showered in the same bath water as their grandparents yeah. every day. Yeah. And they d don't brush their teeth. Yeah. And they don't wear underwear. And they're chained up in 16 different layers of corset. They smell crazy it smells like armpits and, and they're from walking under in being like like ripping off each other's corset i'm like keep that on <laughs> it smells crazy in there i think this is a great so true so okay. what do you think the, the solution is i think i think if we're doing period pieces one address the smell in the show itself yeah okay so you want them to be like hey, 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 ah. yes i want there to be some conversation around like Hey, it smells weird in here. Mary, Mary Todd Lincoln and Abraham hooking up, and, and Abe's just going, I have to be honest. Your pussy like, smells I watched, wild. I watched The Favorite recently, and I was like, Oh, I love this. that movie. It was the first time I'd ever seen it, and I did really like it. But she also had like a flesh eating bacteria. They were sick. <laughs> <laughs> she, Emma Stone walks into the castle covered in poop. Yeah. And they're like, No, she's going to be fucking today. I'm like, What? <laughs> she she didn't have poop on her when she fought though, Shelby. <laughs> no, they took it off but by, with dirty water that all the other servants stood by, bathed in. She was bathing next to all the other servants and then getting like splashed with boiling water. The chamber maidens. The chamber maidens. I'm like, uh, so she didn't smell better. She just had an, it wasn't on her skin anymore, but it, like the, the smell was with her. Who do you think you are in the favorite? Who do I think like I am? Like what character do you think Shelby is? I have an answer, but yeah, I want yours first. <laughs> I don't think I'm Olivia Coleman. Okay. You do? No. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm Joe Alwyn. <laughs> I think perhaps, oh, I'm uh, the cousin from, from <laughs> I'm the, do you, uh, what's that show everyone loves with the family? They're rich. They're the Fox News family. <laughs> uh, succession. succession. Oh my God. <laughs> cousin Greg from Succession. Yeah. In the favorite. <clears throat> Sorry, just trying to <laughs> that up. actor. Instead of oh, Greg you Hirsch. think you think what's his name? Nicholas. <laughs> no, no Holt. Nicholas Holt. No, it's not Nicholas Holt. No. That's Greg a different Hirsch guy. No, cousin Greg. Greg. Cousin what? Greg Hirsch is his name in the character. Uh, oh, Nicholas Braun. Nicholas, Nicholas Braun. Braun. I think it'd be his character. You think you're Nicholas Braun on the favorite? Yeah. I was gonna say you were one of the horses. <laughs> The one that drags her. One of the Clydesdales, yeah. The one that drags her for a really long time. Yeah, that drags Rachel Rice through the... I'm <laughs> Olivia Coleman. Clear to me. <laughs> no, you're the... You're Diseased the, old queen. You're the, you're the guy who is keeping... Is that Rachel Weisz? Uh-huh. In the, in the other castle. <laughs> oh, that where she's like kidnapped and he's like probably a sexual assaulter? <laughs> His character's I, like canonically doing sexual assault. You think that's no, me? No, I think he's... I don't think he's doing any of it. I think he's overseeing it. <laughs> He's, so I'm sorry. You don't think I'm a sexual assault? Do you think I'm a sexual assault czar? Yeah. Oh, Shelby. I thought it was fun that you were a Clydesdale. You said that you're not a person. You're a horse. <laughs> and I said I think you're the boss of a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's just different. It's just different. It's, it's just different. different. No, I um I think I think I'm Nicholas Braun. Nicholas Holt, Nicholas Braun. Nicholas Braun. <laughs> Nicholas Holt's not in the film. Nicholas Holt was the lead of that Nicholas Cage vampire movie. Ah! Uh, Allie's got something. Can I just say Nicholas Braun is not in the favorite. Nicholas Holt is in the favorite. Wow. Succession. Wow. Nicholas Holt is in the favorite. So you. So what do you think you are? Himself. Him still, but um. So you do think you're Nicholas? You think you're the conniving? Um, he was Goofy Town. <laughs> He was like trying to overthrow the kingdom, was he not? For sure, but he was, but in the name of, no, but he was doing it in the name of democracy. Yeah, he's, he's but it isn't town. that I think I'm just in that way. It's that he was kind of like, he was kind of Cute. like, a, like he was kind of like goofy and like, um, he was saying some stuff, you know, he was being funny about it. You definitely identify with silly characters. You think you, sure. you go, I'm silly. I'm goofy. Down. You'll pick the silly guy. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not Olivia Coleman. You're not Olivia Coleman. And I'm not Emma Stone. I don't have I don't have I don't have what she had in that, which was sociopathic um, enterprise. Sociopathic ent entities, yeah. Yeah. I don't I couldn't have I couldn't have been so high, fallen so low, and worked my way back up high. I no. would just be one of the chambermaids forever. And I would make community with them. <laughs> I would get close with the chambermaids. <laughs> yeah, when when they were like in feud with each other, I was like, hold on, you guys band together. You guys stop. <laughs> you guys band together. It would be so good for you guys if you guys could have community down here. Yeah.
<laughs> instead of like poisoning her with lie, why don't you just instead become better friends? Why don't you be in community with one another? Why don't you guys for once in your life be in community with one another? What? Oh, I have a question for you. Sure. What would you delete from... Um, the favorite. <laughs> well, well, if you want, what no. would you delete from the record of the last... How long was it? It's been two years since we did our last Keeping Records episode, maybe? Me and you? Yeah, about... What would you delete from that time period <laughs> of your life? Last two years of your life, what are you deleting? Um, um, l losing our shared job due to strike. <laughs> We lost our shared job due to strike. We lost our shared job due to strike. We lost our shared job due to strike. <laughs> I think I would delete that. I think I would delete the strike. Whoa. Well, I would keep the outcome, but I would delete the time. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you're, you're like, I guess I would delete. I guess I would delete collective action. No, I would keep like the what happened from it, and like I would keep like the community that we found in, within the strike. I loved walking with you guys. Um, but I would get rid of the time that I wasn't making money. And then also the right after losing my job that I was supposed to have after that. Yeah. Also, I think, I guess what I would delete is me being unemployed. I would, de <laughs> <laughs> I would delete the concept of unemployment from, from my personal life. I think for me, like what I would do is I would, I would delete me um, being sort of cast out of my chosen profession. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, and I, and so I would add to the record me having a job <laughs> in my chosen field. I guess, yeah, I would delete me not succeeding at my career. <laughs> I would probably add to the record me having a successful career. <laughs> yeah, if that makes any I sense at all. That's... I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys at home, but for me, it's like I would delete <laughs> the loss of potential opportunity in my chosen field, and I would add ample opportunity in my chosen field. I guess I would delete scarcity and, and add bu abundance. <laughs> I think I would add a couple zeros onto my bank account. Oh yeah, I'm really unique. I would delete me and losing. I would delete the negative side. <laughs> yeah, delete me losing and add me winning, I guess would be anything that I haven't gotten that I wanted in the last two years, I would get. And then I would. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's going to be making myself the hero instead of the fucking Gorchester. <laughs> I'm not the villain, but I'm not the hero. I'm not, I'm not the horse. I'm Olivia <laughs> Coleman. I would add that. I'd add, yeah. I would be Olivia Coleman. Actually, not even just in the favorite. I think I would just be Olivia Coleman. <laughs> Olivia, look at me. <laughs> Let's go Freaky Friday mode. Olivia, please. <laughs> please. You would love my life. I'm young. <laughs> Olivia, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, you would love this body. It would be awesome for you. I'm young and, and I'm having fun out here. I would, I would love to be you for just even five days. Five days? What would you do? Five days as Olivia five Coleman. Five days as Olivia Coleman. I'm whispering in everyone I know's ear how great I am. <laughs> I'm like, you've got to meet this girl. <laughs> She's awesome. There's this talented young comedian <laughs> named Shelby Wolstein. I'm posting it on all my socials. I'm going. She's to going. She's doing. She's doing every. She's doing like every I, interview. I'm. I'm. For, me. I'm forcing my agents to sign me. Oh my I'm. God. I'm going crazy. If I'm switching bodies with a an A list celebrity for five days oh. that whole time is campaigning for me <laughs> there's not a single thing i do that's like crazy fu it's like it's not blank check yeah. for me it's like this is campaign yeah i would probably end like world hunger or something i don't think she has that in her olivia coleman you think she could end world hunger with the snap of a finger no she could not I taylor think she... could <laughs> which taylor Swift. Swift. Swift, honey. She oh could God. end anything if she really wanted to. You're a huge Chiefs fan. <laughs> you love, the, you're low-key a Swifty because you love the Chiefs. So. Olivia, if you're out there, girl. Um, <laughs> Olivia, please hit Shelby up immediately. What do you want? What do you want out of, what do you want out of your career? 
What is the goal, really, truly? If there, if 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 everybody, Caleb's asking this as if we haven't had these conversations. It's for the time. it's for the listeners. What if there's a big time producer listening and they want to know what can I do for Shelby Wolstein? What do you want out of your career? What's the goal? Listen, Ted Sarandos. What's the dream? <laughs> Look at me, Ted. <laughs> Look at me. You would love this body. <laughs> you would love this body. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm young and I'm having fun. And I have boobs. Ted oh my, you that. really do. Ted would love that about me. Boing. Boing. That's, Boing. that's me thinking about your boobs. <laughs> what do I want out of my career? I want to write things and have them made and have them be beloved and I would like to act as sort of like the fourth person on a call sheet. Fourth on a call sheet, okay. I don't want to be number one on a call sheet. Don't ask me to be unless the money's Stop right. Stop asking unless her. the money's right. But I, I think I don't know that I have leading lady capabilities. I think I have really good fourth on the call sheet capabilities. I think you have every, I think you have all the capabilities but I think fourth on the call sheet is a fun place to be. Right, I have like sun fun vibes. Okay. No. <laughs> That'll just live down there now. Fuck. Don't what cry. if I had a huge breakdown after that? Well, it would probably be good for us. We could use clicks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll I'll do my best. If you actually, if you think, if you can think of anything viral to say into the camera, we're always <laughs> looking and thinking. I feel like I've been kind of giving it up. <laughs> I feel like I've been giving you hits left and right. I think I've been sort of talking about Olivia Coleman being in my body. Oh yeah, that's killer. No fear. <laughs> People are gonna love that. I'm being serious. What what would be the dream thing for you to make? What would be the the dream Shelby project if someone was gonna give you the money? Oh brother. Your fans want to know. I don't know if they all know this. Do I know this? What's my dream project? Yeah. What would be the thing you would make if you could? Well, I think if I could, I would make a lot of things, right? Like I think there would be something that I would want to make that is fully about my dad and is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. You're getting the opportunity to do that and I'm going to take it right from And I would steal it from you in a heartbeat? <laughs> um, no, I would write something really uh, beautiful about that that is like funny only in the sense that dialogue is funny, but that it's like actually just full of heart. Or I would make something sort of batshit crazy. Something, something you know... <laughs> 21 Drum Street sort of Oh my crazy. god, I love those movies. That's just fun. We once we once concepted a um sort of a, a murder movie. Did we? Which one was this? You and I have talked about a billion ideas. And we're never in the studio right in the We're up. never in the stew. <laughs> Which one was this? Was this the um the gay friends that do a heist and Yes. Yes, that one. Okay. Kill someone, put them in a truck. Accidentally kill someone, put them in a truck. Kill them, put them in a truck. And it's hard to see how this hasn't been fleshed out. We have almost no. Well, I'm like, what is that? We're like, oh, they kill gay friends, kill someone. That's as far no, as no. It was got. that they did a heist. Yeah. But then they accidentally kill someone, and then the movie ends up being about how they're gonna take care of that body. That actually is a good movie. I'm Wait. really smart. Wait, we're low key talented. Low key. If one of you fucking takes that, <laughs> it gets made next week. <laughs> my dad used to actually. My dad once had an idea where he was in Florida, and he was like. They should do a show about the, the people that work on these boats. And then Below Deck came out and he was like, someone heard me. <laughs> he was like, They're, I'm wired. I'm wired. <laughs> he was literally like, they stole it. And I was like, they just had the idea. They just had the idea. Like as some well. executive has a boat <laughs> and was like, these guys are crazy. Some, some, <laughs> some, some business guy in entertainment lives the same life you do, Dad. <laughs> and, and, They're and, around and they had the idea. And they had the idea. They were on a boat and they said, these guys have kind of a full life. So <laughs> they were like, they were like, honey, I was listening to them. And did you know they have a life when we're not around? I'm like, these are real. <laughs> Hold on, the servants have depth. <laughs> Hold on, the servants have depth. These are people with full lives. What's that? For not? There's a saying for that where you like realize that everyone, every stranger has its own. Their oh own world. God, yeah, it's called my reason for being depressed in college. When you when you accidentally recognize the humanity <laughs> in everybody, that's exhausting. <laughs> Today, someone flicked me off in the car, and I was like. <laughs> you accepted it. You liked it. I didn't like it, but I was like, they needed that. Uh, it, it, <laughs> the links I will go to sometimes when I'm trying to have a well <laughs> outlook, yeah. and someone will be so objectively bad around me, and I'll be like, I'll be like, yeah, they must be. They must have just gotten a really bad diagnosis or something. That's why they're acting that way. Well, I, <laughs> I think he ended up being kind of fucked up. This guy. There was a guy who in my high school came as a speaker, and he. Was a, He had Tourette's and he also had like a medical condition as well. And he was talking about how like he was going on a, a bus and he was saying like his Tourette's had him like 
saying a bunch of slurs. Mm. And he was like, and people were really mad at me, which is like, yep, yeah, of course. Yeah, and, but then he was slurs. like, but what they didn't know is that my mom died that day. And I was like, oh, well, you're still like on the bus killing slurs. I <laughs> so think. what, I'm sorry, <laughs> he was paid to come talk to you guys about why it's okay to say slurs sometimes? No, he was just coming to talk to us about, uh, I guess, um, empathizing with other people's experiences. Yeah. Uh, he said he pooped crazy. That was like, I remember that vividly. <laughs> he said he pooped crazy <laughs> on stage. I actually think he did something really cool in his speech. A lot of what he said I didn't agree with, but he did when you walked in the auditorium. <laughs> he gave every a uh, couple people randomly a piece of paper, yeah. and it was like, at this time, stand up and bark, or like at this time, do this, and he was like, that's kind of like what it's like to live with threats. Shelby, I've got a game for you. Good, you know I love them. This is true or false, okay? I'm going to read you 15 statements, and you have as quickly as you can, tell me if you think they're true or false, each one. If you get 10 or more of these correct, I'm going to give you 50 US dollars. You ready? I think. I hope. All modern dogs are descendants of wolves. Yes. True. The letter J is the only letter in the alphabet not included in the periodic table. Yes. True. Fortune cookies were invented in China. No. False. The United States. All kings in a standard deck of cards have a mustache. No. False. King of Hearts does not. The letter E is the most common in the English language. Yes. True. There are 30 NFL teams. 32. F false. 32. That's my girl. Kwanzaa lasts for five nights. False. False. Seven. Yeah. The names of the mascots for Rice Krispies are Snap, Crackle, and Pop. False. That's just what they say. True. French fries Damn. originated in France. Wrong. False. Belgium. Toy Story was Pixar's first movie. True. True. John W. Willie was the first mayor of Cleveland. <laughs> False. True. There Damn. are 10,000 dots on an NBA basketball. False. <laughs> False. 35,000. The human body is about 60% water. It's more. True. Steve Jobs owned the rights to the Flintstones cartoon. False. False. Online sports gambling is illegal in Alaska. True. True. How much you get? 12. Ah! You might. Is that the highest one yet? <laughs> My girl's a genius. <laughs> Wait, what was the what was the one you got right that I was surprised about? Um, thirty. Yeah, oh yeah, you knew the the number of the NFL teams. Yeah, thirty two. I don't know that. That's crazy. Thirty two. I knew Kwanzaa was seven days because it's like a menorah but with seven instead of eight. You're so culturally competent, girl. You're so you're so smart about culture, girl. <laughs> the lesbian hand rub. <laughs> <laughs> where lesbians rub their hands Caleb together like little I, mice. Caleb and I were at our friend Allie's the other day, and I was rubbing my hands like that close to a window, and Caleb was like, what if you just fell out? <laughs> what if you fell out of that window doing that? Would you be happy? Oh, no, your phone on the ground. <laughs> I'd, yeah. I wouldn't be happy, but again, I think some of my friends would benefit. You saying that our friends would benefit from you dying is one of the craziest things you've ever uttered in my presence, and I've known you for a minute. <laughs> I think it's not that I think like it's not that I think my absence is the gift. The gift is to go through something hard. <laughs> it's the gift of perspective. <laughs> you don't think we could give it to him in another way? I don't know. I think I went through a lot of stuff for a lot of long time. And then my dad died and I said, whoa, <laughs> this Ooh. feels different. Oh. <laughs> I said, damn, death feels different for real when it's close to F you. FR, FR, FR. <laughs> FR, 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 when death is close to you, it feels different. Death is low-key different when it's close to you. <laughs> death is low-key different. Death hits different when it it's near to the heart. It does when it's near and dear. And so I'm like, I don't know. Hey, what's your favorite type of movie? Right. Like, 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 I'm not talking genre. I'm talking like your favorite thing that, like, my favorite thing in a movie is when, like, basically my favorite movie is a coming age, a coming of age movie, like when someone realizes what it's all about <laughs> or who they really are. Um, mine, I I think is like a puzzle. What do you mean? Like, not even necessarily specifically psychological thrillers, but like something where like I, as the audience, am figuring out something alongside the character. Oh, like they're putting us, uh, they're put, like kind of like the hangover. <laughs> <laughs> they're putting together what happened in your right there and with me them. as well. Yeah. I recently was, I had been talking about how much I loved the movie Premonition. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I haven't seen it since the first time I saw it, but I remember loving it. And I watched it again. It's the worst movie ever made. I've never seen it. It <laughs> has like a 2% on Rotten Tomatoes. 
<laughs> Have you ever seen Murder by Numbers? No. It was a Ryan Gosling and Sandra Bullock movie. I've been doing a lot of paint by numbers. Ryan Gosling and Sandra Bullock or Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock? Ryan Gosling, Sandra Bullock. Is it when they dated? I don't know, but that's weird. The, here's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a scary, it's not scary. It's a fucked up kind of weirdo movie, but there's a sex scene in it where Ryan Gosling is naked. And I watched that movie at a pretty formative time. And I had to definitely pause and rewind the scene a couple of times to be like, I'm into whatever he's got going on, <laughs> but it's, it's like a movie about him stuff. being like a, a psychopathic killer. Well, sometimes that can be, <laughs> sometimes it's what gets you going. Sometimes that's the threat, you know? That's <laughs> that's the threat. Sometimes the threat of being killed is what can turn you on. <laughs> sometimes the threat could be that you might fall in love, and sometimes the threat might be that you could be killed at any moment. Well, you need a threat. <laughs> se <laughs> sexual attraction is all about threat. What am I threatened by? How can I get it close to me? How can I be threatened a little bit more today? Uh, what color can their hair be? <laughs> Brown, blonde. The right kind of red. A cer a certain reds. <laughs> certain yellows. <laughs> Let's get on sort of a neutral palette, I guess. Would you, take, would you take gray, by the way? Just back to that conversation for one second. Sure, I think a tasteful gray. Okay, cool. Just good to know. Just good to know. A tasteful gray. What is your, what is your favorite memory of us? <laughs> Our, my favorite memory of you and I... Hmm. I want to think of one, too. My favorite memory of me and you. Your I mean, my most wholesome memory of us is like moving to LA together and just going on a lot of drives to like Malibu because we didn't know anyone else. <laughs> yeah, we were just in the car being like, well, I guess we're going to explore LA. <laughs> we're like going through the hills being like, gorgeous, huh? <laughs> so also we moved to your height of COVID. June 2020. June 2020. A, glo a globally good month. God, we were in Historically, it. we were loving June 2020. My favorite memory of us would probably be when I, I'm assuming some of the listeners at least know this, but you and I ran a weekly show together in Chicago for two years that was called Studio 11. And I would say as like- the world burns? At, what was, oh yeah, oh my God, as the world burns. Shelby and I did a, we did an improvised um, with Tom Simmermaker and there were other people in it sometimes, right? Or was it just me, you and Tom? Or just three of Well, Alex- Collier Alex Collier from the booth. the booth, but we did uh, we did an improvised um, soap opera called As the World Burns, and that was fucking psychotic. But anytime, like I would say, every three weeks of that weekly show, we would have a huge audience, and just all those shows were like the best. That show rocked. That show rocked. If you guys didn't get to go to that, I'm really sorry because you would have really been different. You missed out on Studio Eleven. John was there. I can vouch for that. John went to Studio Eleven. Allie. Allie never made it to one. I don't think. Allie has never really supported me. And I, she's never supported me. I've she's known, never really supported you. She's never supported me at all. I've known Allie since we were 14 years old, and I have never once gotten support from her. She's really not a nice girl. No. And, <laughs> no, she's gorgeous. Beautiful. One of the most beautiful girls we know. Beautiful, but it's but like, toxic. It's like every once in a while, it's like you're just kind of like, oh, like it looks like aren't everything like. <laughs> Who do you think is your friend who's the most beautiful but the least cool? I don't think I can answer that. Name them. Everybody in the comments say, tag your friend. <laughs> tag your friend who's who's gorgeous but ugly on the inside. <laughs> Mine's bug. <laughs> Mine's your cat bug. She's gorgeous and gorgeous inside. She's beautiful, but she has a toxic behaviors. Not anymore. Did she cool up after me? Yes. She doesn't even make sounds anymore. Oh, that this might be something crazy. to look into. <laughs> this girl's crazy. You're like, you're like, yeah, she barely moves. She can't see. <laughs> I'm like she's, she's awesome. She's been in the same spot for six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it hasn't moved. I haven't eaten. Hasn't eaten. <laughs> she's dead. <laughs> no. I drag her around the house. We go on walks. I drag her around on her leash. It's awesome. No, I tell her every day that sh I won't live a day longer than her. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Shelby. Uh, Shelby is fine. <laughs> Everything's good with Shelbyino. I'm all good, but I will not live a day longer than my cat. She's got like 20 years left in her. Don't stress. But when she's gone, so too am I. <laughs> but that's right around the 45 mark. I actually really fear the day that Bug goes because I know I'm going to have a tough week. It's I know tough I'll be week, honey. In. It's a year. I it It's going to be one of the worst things that's ever happened to me. And yeah. not top five, but top 10. Top 10. Bugs in top ten. Bugs top ten. She's probably number six. Like if she's up there. She's in there. Could be seven. No chance she's nine. There's no chance. Hey, I have one final question for you. Fuck. I know. It sucks. Our time is coming to an end. 
But what was your favorite episode of Keeping Records? And it can it can only be from our era. It can't be EJ's era because obviously we love EJ. But I want to talk about our um, era. You know my favorites. There's a top three for me. Yeah. It's Beth Stelling. Yeah. It's Sam Irby. Yeah. And it's when we had the guy who worked on the guy from the actual records. The actual records on. I th I think yeah, guy who worked on the records. And I f his name is escaping me right now. I, I feel mine too. About I feel it. John weird. Landgraf or John. It is John. John. Oh Get boy. on the keys. <laughs> Get on the fucking keys. What was his name? John La uh, Louderman. John Landgraf. You really want him to be Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like John Lahayam, is it? Was it John Steen? John John, John Steenbergen. <laughs> John. <laughs> no, I would love if he was Jewish. I don't know if he was John Landau. No, that's also a Jewish name. Is it? <laughs> well, you know my reverence for the Jewish people knows no bounds. <laughs> yeah, you guys had a lot of episodes. It's early. Oh fuck, John. <laughs> John Lomberg. Lomberg! John you Lomberg. You don't have to look it up. It's John Lomberg. And by the way, that's Jewish. Is that Jewish name? I was kind of on with that. Um, yeah. You don't have to look. I know it in my heart. It's John, John Lomberg. Lomberg. Sweet. He was the king. Woo. <laughs> he zoomed in from Hawaii. He's the best. No worries. I fucking love that guy. One of the best guys I've ever talked to. I fucking love that guy. And he worked on the Golden Records. Do you, is there anything you want to plug to the listeners? Where to follow you? Where to find you? You guys know my handle. It's my full name, Shelby Wolstein. I will have a podcast soon. You guys should listen to that. It would mean the world. Beyond that, if you have an uncle or a dad or a cousin who has a show <laughs> that they want to hire me on, I'll work on it for a salary. <laughs> and nothing more. <laughs> and nothing more. A salary and If they want to give more. me benefits, tell them to get Dream fucked. on. <laughs> Get fucked. I will not take a benefit from a company. I won't take benefits or accolades. <laughs> I want a salary only. I want a salary only and I want it to be low. I want it to be only barely livable. <laughs> I want to be concerned about making rent. <laughs> I want people to be worried about me, but I want to be having a task during the day. If you want people to be worried about you, I think this episode has certainly done it. We <laughs> I love you so much. Thanks for being on. Hey, thanks for having me. Love you so much. I love you. We got to talk more often. What's up? We haven't chatted in a couple of years. This was fun. This was fun. Oh, I love you. Let's go. Oh, my God.